Sarvaja, Associate Professor, Department of CAC, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. Today, I am going to discuss about console input output and formatted printing in Python. Now, first of all, how to read input in Python. So, for that, there is a method called input method. So, using this method, whenever you enter some input, it will convert that input into string. So, by default, whatever input you will read, that is in string format. So, what you have to do? Suppose you have to read some input. So, directly you can write down input method. So, without giving any appropriate message, you can read the input. Otherwise, if you want to give any appropriate message to read the input, then within the input method, you can write the, your message within single or double quotes and read the input. So, look at here. So, here in the first example, I have written the input method without giving any message. So, I am giving some value and it is reading that input. Now, in the second case, I have given some value, enter some value as a message to the input method and I am entering some, some value rama after this message. So, without using message, you can read value or with the message also using input method, you can read some value. Now, similarly, if you want to store the input in a variable, then you can write like this. Like, so for example, using the input method, I want to read some input, then I need to store it into a variable for future uses. So, you can write, for example, sc is equal to input method. So, whatever the input I will read from the keyboard, that will be stored into this variable s. Then I can print the value of s. Similarly, with a message also, I am writing the input method that enter your value. So, whatever value I am giving that is stored into the variable val and then I am printing. So, these are the two different ways you can read some input from the console. Now, as you know, whatever you will read from the console that will be treated as string. But if you want to read some integer or float value, then you need to go for explicit typecasting. That means the input value what you are reading, if you want to convert, if you need integer, you have to explicitly convert into integer. If you need float, then you have to explicitly convert into float or string and so on. Okay. Now, let us see one example. Suppose I want to read a number. So, num is equal to input, enter a number. So, the number which I am reading, suppose I am reading a number 123, but the number will be stored as a string like this. Okay. So, in the num variable, the number is stored which is in the string format. Similarly, I want to read a name. So, enter your name. So, whatever the name you are writing, suppose the name is in the string format only. Now, but I need a number to work with that. So, for example, so for that, uh, I have to explicitly change it to integer type. You can see over here, num is explicitly typecasted to integer by writing the int method. So, int of num when you will do, then the string which is there inside the num value that will be changed into integer. Okay. Now, if you want to check whenever you read some input from the console, what is the type of variable it is, what is the type of value inside it, you can check, you can check it using the type method. So, if you will check the type of num and type of name, you will see that it, it belongs to string class. It belongs to string class. Now, after explicitly converting into integer type or float type, whatever type you want, you can explicitly convert it and then you can check its type. You will see that it is converted into integer class, float class and so on. Okay, so this is the way explicit explicit typecasting should be used for converting the input into your required format. Now, let us see how to display the output using the print method in Python. Now, print method in in the print method, if you want to display some output, then you have to write like this: print. Suppose I want to display a string. Hello students. So, I can write down that string using singular double quotes and it will be printed as it is. Similarly, if I want to print a set of integer values like print 5, 6, 7. So, a list of values or a set of values I want to display. So, you can display using the print method. Now, similarly, if you want to repeat a string for n number of times, then you can write like this. For example, if there is a numeric string that is 5, I want to repeat for 6 times. Then I can write 5, 
into 6 times. So, here the star is known as the string repetition operator. So, it will repeat that string. It is a repetition operator. It will repeat the string for 6 number of times in this example. Next, similarly, I want to repeat this string hello 10 number of times. So, using star operator, you can do that task. So, in the print statement, you can write such kind of expression also. So, here hello will be repeated 10 times. You can see the output here. Now, if I want to print mixed type of data, that means a, a set of values of different data types, I can print in a single line. For example, you can see over here, here btec is a string here, 30 is an integer, 82.2 is a float value and 4.5 is a complex number and true is a boolean value. So, different types of values are there. If you want to print, you can print it in a single line separated by commas. So, you can see the output over here. Now, if you want to use explicitly the separators in Python, then you can print multiple values with a separator and with an end value. So, if you want to give some separator, by default, the separator is space in Python. If you want to give a separator like comma, then you can use it. So, you can see the output that all the values are now separated by comma. And here I have used an end with some uh, special characters if you want to use also. So, with end also you can write some special characters that will be displayed. So, here I have printed the exclamation marks three times. So, that is added at the end. So, with the print statement separator and end can be used according to your need. Now, let us see that with the outputs, the input output console, the, the input what you are reading and the output what you want to display. So, if you, if you want to iterate using a loop, you can also iterate. For example, you can see over here that using a for loop, I want to iterate the string. So, I am writing here for i in Python print i, then what it will do? So, it will iterate from the 0th index. Suppose the string is Python. So, in a string, the index number always starts with 0. So, p is at index number 0, y is at index number 1, t is at index number 2, h is at index number 3 and so on. So, in this way, the index numbers are given in Python. So, whenever you write a loop, the index number, the, the variable value i, it trade over the string with all the indexes starting from 0 and it will print character by character. So, the output in this case will be p, y, t, h, o, n in this format. So, by default, the uh, new line character will be used and you will get the string like this. Now, similarly, if you want to use any end value over here, for example, here the same for loop I have written by with an addition of end value. So, I want that after each character, the colon should be printed. So, here end is equal to colon. So, you can see the characters are now separated by the colon over here. Similarly, if you want to give comma as the uh, separator between the characters while printing. So, you can write end is equal to comma. So, you can see the output that the same string python is separated by each character is separated by commas. Now, similarly, if you want to do any calculation, any mathematical calculation or you want to write any big expression in the print statement, then also it is possible. For example, you can see here the value of population is 130. Now, I want to calculate what will be the population in 2050. So, I am just multiplying the population value with a factor of 1.28. So, that means this is the population into 1.28. This is called an expression. So, this expression will be evaluated and then it is printed by the print statement. That means expressions are also allowed which will be first evaluated and then its final value will be printed by the print statement. So, you can see here population into 1.28 is done and the final value is printed here. So, in this way, print statement works in Python. Now, how to accept input from console? So, to accept input from console, you are using input method. Now, here, the input method, whatever it reads, it, it by default converts into string. So, let us see if you want to read some integers, then how to convert it in one line. For example, I want to read two integers and find the addition of two integers. Then I can directly write 
num1 is equal to int of input of that means using the input method first input method is executed it will it will read some input from the console that input is explicitly converted into integer explicitly converted into integer and then it is stored the integer value is stored into the number that means here the string to integer conversion is going on because you have written the int method explicitly similarly the next value using input method you are reading then it is explicitly converted into integer and then it is stored into the second number then that means now num1 and num2 contains two integers now you can write down the print statement to find the addition of two numbers so directly in the print statement you can write the expression num1 plus num2 to get the sum of two numbers similarly if you want to read two float values or if you want to read a string then you can explicitly type cast by writing float over here so here you can write a string method but it is not required also because the default is string type so it is not necessary but if you want to use how to use a string method in python you can use str of input that is also allowed so if in the first example i want to read two float numbers so i can write num1 is equal to float of input that means the input what you are reading is explicitly converted into float and then it is stored into num1 similarly two float numbers you are reading and then you are adding two float numbers so in the third case the built in string method if you want to use you can use it but it is not required because by default the input is in string format now next let us see how to read multiple lines of input or multiple values or multiple input values from the console now to read multiple values you can use two ways you can use two ways one is called using split method and using list comprehension these are the two ways to read multiple values from the console now let us understand first how split method works to read multiple inputs at a time now the syntax for split method is input method dot split method and the split method takes two argument one is called separator second one is called maximum split that you want to do okay now here in the separator this both the arguments are not mandatory both the arguments are optional so if you want to you give any separator other than space space is the by default separator if you want to specify other than space you can mention the separator there and by default it will split based on the space it will split all the inputs but if you want to specify that how many inputs you want to split then you can split a value in max split so in maximum split you suppose i am reading 10 inputs but out of that i want to split only 5 inputs based on the space then i can specify here the max split value is equal to 5 if you do not mention anything for both the arguments the default separator is space and maximum split means if you do not mention then all the values will be splitted okay now let us see through example that how split method works now suppose i want to read two inputs at a time so i am writing two variables in the left hand side x comma y is equal to input enter two values dot split method so you can observe over here in the split method i have not given any parameter so the default separator is my space the default separator is my space okay and maximum split i didn't mention here so that means whatever the input values you are giving all will be splitted all will be splitted now so i want to give two values at the console suppose i am giving 10 and 20 can you see over here so whenever you gave this input it will be treating this as 10 and 20 that is a string now the separator the split method will split it into two parts it will split it into two parts and now each one is a string 10 is a separate string and 20 is also a separate string and the first string will be stored into the variable x and the second string is stored into the variable y this is the way we read multiple inputs now suppose the numeric strings what you have read if you want numbers that means you assume that you want to read two numbers but the values what you have given 10 20 are now at present it is numeric strings at present it is numeric strings so using the explicit int method you can convert this into integers so you can see the next line x comma y is equal to explicitly you have to write int of x comma int of y if you will write like this then the num the strings 
the numeric strings what you are you have read 10 and 20 is explicitly converted into integer now finally x will contain the integer 10 and y will contain the integer 20 now after that you print the value of x and y here so we'll get 10 here and 20 here so next we'll go for how to read three inputs at a time so i have given three variables x comma y comma z in the similar manner input method entered three values dot split so again i didn't mention any separator and maximum split so by default the separator is space and all the values will be splitted for example you can see here if the input is given as 1 2 3 so it will be treated as 1 2 3 as a complete string then the split method will split it into three parts and each one is a string 1 is a string 2 is a string and 3 is also a string now here in the second line explicitly typecasting is used by writing x comma y comma z is equal to int of x int of y and int of z to explicitly convert the string into integer after that each one will be like this first value will be one second value will be two and third value will be three and then it is printed here using the print statement so here one two three will be the output okay so hope it is understood how to read multiple inputs using the split method from the console now let us see some more examples using map method how to map the values let us understand now my target is to read multiple inputs from the user so using map method how to do that let us understand now Suppose I want to read two inputs x comma y is equal to input dot split. So I have given for example the value 10, 20. Now this is treated to be a string 10, 20 is a string over here. Now if you will print x comma y then it is a string. So you are getting 10, 20 as a string. You are getting 10, 20 as a string. Though it looks like two numbers are available but it is a string like this. Okay. Now instead of writing explicitly int method in a separate line using map method I can do that task that means I want to convert this string into two different integers that is my target so instead of writing in a separate line using explicitly int method using map method we can do that task in a single line let us see how to do it now let us see a comma b two inputs I want to read is equal to map of int comma input dot split that means first input method will be executed it will read the inputs 10 space 20 10 space 20 it is reading as a string and split method is splitting into two parts and then the int method is converting each string into integer each string into integer so it is now 10 and 20 and then it will be mapped because of the map function the values will be mapped into the variable a and b that means the first value 10 will be stored into the variable a and the second value will be stored into the variable b in this way map method works so you can do the uh, reading multiple values then splitting converted converting into a particular data type and then mapping into appropriate variables all these things can be combined and can be done in a single line in python that is the beauty of python now let us see one more example i want to read two float numbers so you can write m comma n is equal to float of map of float of then input dot split that means using input you are reading two float values suppose you are giving input as 100 space 200 so which is a string okay now split method will split it into two strings so 100 is a string and 200 is another string then float method will explicitly convert into float so 100 and 200 becomes 100.0 and 200.0 then map method has mapped the values into appropriate variables so the first value 100 will be stored into m second value 200 will be stored into the variable n so if you will print you can see 100.0 and 200.0 is the output now instead of using map method there is another way to read multiple inputs also that is called the list comprehension technique list compre comprehension technique so how to use the list method and along with the map method to read the inputs to do mapping and then finally storing into a list that you can do it in one line let us see here so suppose i want to read multiple inputs so in the previous example you can see over here 
if i want to read multiple inputs suppose two inputs i have given the variable names as x comma y or a comma b or m comma n so for reading multiple inputs i cannot write i should not write multiple variables if i want to read three variable five variable 10 variable it is not a good programming style to read to write multiple variable names in the left hand side suppose i want to read the input up to n up to n length so what i have to do i have to go for any comprehension technique so here i am telling one example of list comprehension so by taking one list object one single variable you can read multiple inputs in a single line let us see how suppose x is in list object x is a variable is equal to can you see over here the outer method is called list that means the finally the output is going to be converted into a list then the innermost method is inner method is called map method so it will do the mapping then int method then input dot split so what is the order of execution of this method so first method is input method so using input method we can read some input from the console so for example at the console you are giving 10 20 30 40 50 as the input so this whole thing is treated to be a string this whole thing is treated to be a string then split method acts on it that it splits all the inputs based on space so 10 20 30 40 50 will be splitted based on space now each one is an individual integer 10 is an individual integer 20 is an integer 30 is an integer 40 is an integer and 50 is also an individual integer now all the integer values are mapped where it should be mapped it's it is mapped to the object x but before mapping first it is converted into a list it is converted into a list so can you can you observe over here it is converted into a list so square brackets are there that means it is it is converted into a list and then stored into the variable x so in a single line multiple inputs you have read you have mapped to the variable and you have splitted it and then stored into a single variable in the left hand side so all this operation can be done in a single line in python okay this is the usage of the list comprehension technique now what is list comprehension in brief list comprehension is an elegant way to define and create a list in python so we can create a list just like mathematical statements in one line only just like the, now the example we have seen we have done so many things in one line you have read the input you have splitted it you have mapped it and then you have you have, you have stored into a list so all these things can be done in a single line so using list comprehension one of the example is we can read multiple inputs from the user now let us see some more example without using list method using the uh, list comprehension technique that is using the square bracket how can you create how can you read multiple inputs so for example i want to read two inputs x and y so x comma y is equal to can you see the square bracket instead of writing the explicitly the list method here square bracket is used square bracket also finally convert the output into a list okay now what you are writing int of i this is called the explicit type casting for i in input enter two values that means this for loop will run two times and suppose you are giving two inputs the for loop will run two times and it will read two inputs because of the input method is there it, it is going to read two values and then those two values are splitted based on the space and each one will be converted into integer int of i explicitly each value will be converted into integer and then it is stored into the variable x and y so you can see over here that you have given your input as 10 space 20 two inputs you have given so these two inputs are are read by the loop okay by the input method then it has splitted using the split method then it has converted into integer string 10 to integer 10 and then it is stored into the variable x and y so if you will print what is the first number what is stored in x and what is stored in y means you will get the output integer 10 and integer 20 right next let us go for how to read three inputs in the similar manner just three variables i have taken in the left hand side x comma y comma z is equal to int of x for x in input enter three values and split it so three values will be read simultaneously one after the other it will be splitted and converted explicitly into integer 
and then it is stored or mapped into the respective variables. So here x will contain 10, the y will contain 20 and z will contain 30. So hope it is understood. Right. Now, similarly, multiple inputs you want to read, but you have to give only one list object. So, you can do it in a single line. X is the list object you can see over here in the left hand side, it is the list object. Now, X is equal to U square brackets because finally the output should be converted into list int of X for X in input enter multiple values. So, you go on giving the inputs. Each input will be split based on the space. You can see over here, I have given multiple values, 14, 25, 75, 85, a set of numbers I have given, which is the complete string, okay. Then the split method is splitting all this into and it is converting into independent or individual numeric strings. Then each one is converted into integer, int of x you have written and then it is the, all the values are stored into a list and x is the or list object name. So, multiple values you can read at a time and store into a list using a single list object without taking multiple list object values. Okay. Now, let us quickly go through one example that you know that the split method takes two arguments or two parameters. So far, we have discussed the examples where you have not used any separator or max split value. So, we have just written split method, open bracket and open and close it because we have not used any argument. Let us see what is the meaning of this argument. First argument is called separator and the second argument is called max split. Now, how to use this arguments? So, Using separator, if you do not want to give space as the default separator, if you want to give a different separator like comma or any special character, any separator you want to use, you can mention that. Then out of total inputs, if you want to split only few number of inputs, like three inputs, four inputs or two inputs, then you can specify the maximum split value there. Okay, let us see here. For example, I want to read multiple values. So enter multiple values input for x in input enter multiple values. So, you can see the example I am using multiple values but I have used the separator as comma. That means while giving the inputs you have to give comma as the separator. So, you can see here while giving the input I have written 10 comma 20 comma 30 comma 40. So, comma as the separator I am giving. Then I am specifying the max split value as 3 that means out of all these values the whole thing is a string, this this to this much, 10 to 80, this, this is a complete string. Out of that, you only split three values. So, it has splitted only three values. So, it has splitted only three values over here. So, can you see over here that 10 is an individual numeric string, 20 is an individual numeric string and 30 is an individual numeric string. Rest of the numbers, rest of the string is as it is from 40 to 80 because you have mentioned max split is equal to 3. This is the way the arguments in the split method you have to use. Okay. Now, this is all about how to read input and display the output from the console. So, we discuss about the input method and also the print method. Now, let us discuss about how to do, how to apply formatting while displaying our output. So, for applying the formatting, there are two ways mainly in Python. One is using the curly braces, you can apply some formatting and there is a special built-in method called format method. So, using format method also, you can apply formatting. So, let us see one by one how to apply formatting using the placeholder concept using curly braces and also using format method. Okay. Now, let us see one example. I want to read two inputs and then display those two input values using the format method. Suppose I am writing here a comma b is equal to input enter two values. So those two values are splitted because I have written split function. So you can see here the input is 1020 and it is splitted. Okay. Now after splitting in the second line I am writing that explicitly I want to convert those two values into integer. So, I am writing a comma b is equal to int of a comma int of b. So, here the numbers, the 
string 10 and 20 are now converted into integer 10 and integer 20. So, after that, I want to display the output using some output formatting using format method. So, can you see over here, the first number is I have written some curly braces, second number also curly braces. That means, here using format method, okay, dot format a comma b. That means, the value of a will appear in the first curly braces, what you have mentioned and the value of b will appear in the second curly braces. So, so here the curly braces are also known as the placeholder. It is known as placeholder. So, the order in which the variables appear in the format method. So, the first variable that appears in the format method is a. The second variable is b. Okay. So, the first curly braces that appears from left to right in that the value of a will fall and in the second curly braces the value of b will fall. So, that means the value of a will be displayed over here and value of b will be displayed over here. So, here 10 you will get and here 20 you will get. Its value will get it. This is called the placeholder concept. Using format method and using placeholder concept, you can format your output. Now, in a similar example, again two numbers you are reading x comma y and format x comma y means first number will be stored or it will fall into the first placeholder, second number will be kept in the second placeholder and the output will be displayed. Can you see the output over here? You are reading 10 and 50. This, so, the first number is 10 and the second number is 50. So, this is the way using placeholder concept and the built-in format method, you can do formatting, output formatting in Python. Now, if you want to give the positional arguments, that means at, at which position, which output should be displayed, you can use in the format method also. In the pl placeholder, you can specify the position of the arguments also. You can see over here, see I want to display it, I love, there is a placeholder, then format programming. That means I want the output as I love programming. So, in the format method, there is only one argument. So, that argument's placeholder is given here. So, programming will be displayed. So, the output will be I love program. In the second example, I have two arguments in the format method. One is called Python, another one is called program. So, there can be multiple arguments in the format method. So, in what order you want to display? So, you can write its positional values. For example, you always know that the positional value always starts from 0. So, Python is at the 0th position and programming is there at the first position. So, in the placeholder, you can mention the position also. So, I love 0, argument 0 and argument 1. So, 0th argument is Python, second arg first argument is programming. So, the output will be I love Python programming. So, this way also formatting can be done by based on the positional arguments. Now, if you want to do formatting, output formatting, you can also use the string modulo operator, string modulo operator. So, modulo operator is very popularly in uh, use for string formatting. Now, see some examples how to do the string formatting using modulo operator. Now, instead of writing format method, suppose you want to print two values, one is an integer, one is a float value for example, then instead of writing format method, use directly the modulo operator. So, you can see here, value 1 is equal to modulo percentile, modulo means percentile symbol, 2d you have given, okay, or for value 2 you have given percentile 5.2f, what is the meaning of this, okay, and the values you have given, Earlier we have used format method, now we are using only modulo operator. So, 1 and one, 1 integer, 1 float value we have given. Now, how these values gets, your how these values will be uh, printed in the output. Now, here whenever you are giving modulo 2d, here the first integer value what you have mentioned, that is known as the width. Okay. Second one is that, what is the data type of it? So, it is of decimal type. So, you want to display one decimal integer. Now, in the second example, 5.2 is known as the width only. Okay. But what you want? There are, you want that, you want to assign 5 spaces like this out of that 
two spaces you want to allocate for your fraction that is for the fractional part okay after decimal you want to allocate two places and the number is in which format it is in float format you want the output to be a float so can you see over here one is the integer i am providing so two spaces i have given percentile 2d so one space is enough so one leading space you will get in the output similarly for the next one it is a float number but i want total allocated space is 5 5.2 5 out of that after decimal two places only so the output you can see here it is 5.33 with the leading spaces in the first example leading space then one similarly the next example i want to print how many students are there and how many boys are there suppose 240 is the total student number of boys is 120 so what is the formatting i have used i have given percentile 3d and percentile 2d over here 3 is the total allocated your width and 2 is the total allocated width and d is the decimal formatting so you can see over here so 240 is the first value that will be printed over here and the second value 120 is printed over here okay in the third example you can see here i want to print one octal value so how to print octal value the value which you have given modulus 25 so this 25 is a decimal number 25 is a decimal number by default so if you want to print its equivalent decimal equivalent octal format so i have written here percentile your 10 o so this o indicates that the output i want in octal form 10 indicates that the total allocated width is 10 spaces so you are allocating 10 spaces and to print this 25's equivalent octal number so 25's equivalent octal number is 31 so remaining eight spaces leading spaces are there in the beginning similarly the second example is you are giving one decimal number and you want to convert this into a hexadecimal format so percentile 10x total width you have allocated is 10 spaces and you want x means hexadecimal format so the equivalent of 25 is 19 and remaining leading spaces are there in the next example you want to print in the exponential form so you have given a exponential value you have given a float value and you are mentioning 5.3 e e means exponential form so you have it has converted into the exponential format so total allocated width is 5 out of this your 3 is after decimal so it is it is printed like this 1.23 5 after decimal 3 places then in exponential format so this way you can do using the string modulo operator you can do output formatting in python now now for the let us discuss some uh, the what are the different types of parameters we can use in the format method now what is the syntax for format method string dot format you can give a number of values in the in the format method and the values are required you can give a list of values in the format method now the values must be comma separated values now to do the to give the format parameters so you can write either positional parameters or you can use the keyword or named parameters there are two ways you can provide the parameters so one is called positional parameters one is called keyword or named parameter let us see some example based on positional parameter and named parameter now see in this example i am using format method so f name is a name a string rama and a is, is a number 36 okay while displaying i am directly writing the name of the variable that is f name and name this is called your named parameter so directly i am giving the variable name or object name so f name what is the f name it is rama so while displaying it will display rama and what is the age it is 36 so it will display here so in the you in the placeholder directly you can mention the named argument okay similarly instead of mentioning the name or named argument you can directly mention its position so this is called positional argument so so by default zero is the first argument zeroth argument and then first argument so in the placeholder you write down zero and one so rama will be displayed over here and 36 age will be displayed over here 
but if you do not want to mention any named argument or any positional argument by default you are just using the placeholder so by default it displays the arguments which is given in the format based on the positional parameters only so here you can see in third example i didn't mention the positional argument 0 or 1 or 2 or anything and i am not using also named argument but still it displays because by default it takes the positional parameters so rama and 36 will be displayed now let us discuss several number formatting with alignment so for example, while displaying the output, you want to display the output from as a, as a left, left justified format or right justified format or center alignment, then how to do it. Okay. Now, for that, we use colon and less than symbol. If you will use less than symbol, then it will left align the result. If you will use greater than symbol, it will do right alignment. If you will use this cap symbol or XOR symbol, then it will do center alignment. If you will use equal to symbol, then it will place the sign to the leftmost position. So, these are the ways we can do number formatting and let us see some examples for each of it. Okay. Similarly, if you want to do number formatting, so if you want to mention the sign, whether it is a positive number, negative number, you can mention colon plus for positive numbers, colon minus for negative numbers and you can use a space also, extra space for positive numbers or negative numbers. You can use a comma also as a separator uh, for thousand separator and so on and you can also use an underscore as a separator. So, these are the ways you can do formatting for the sign numbers. Similarly, there are a number of other formatting styles which you can use with the format method. So, you, if you write colon B, then it is in binary format, colon C, then it will convert into the corresponding Unicode character, colon D means decimal format, colon E means scientific format, colon capital E, colon, uh, sorry, colon F, fixed number format, capital F, G, cap, O, octal format, hexadecimal, small x or capital X, any the number format and your percentage format. So, these are the different or other formatting you can use with the format method. Now, let us see some of the examples. Suppose there is a string, welcome to Python. Okay. Now, I want to make this string center alignment and I want to decorate it with a special character dollar. So, you can see here, I can use the built-in center method or I can use some formatting. So, first I will show you how to write the center method without using formatting. So, I can write here string 1 dot center. Center is a built-in method. 40 comma dollar. That means for this string, I am totally allocating 40 spaces. So, the it will be center aligned. The original string will be center aligned and the remaining spaces, whatever is left out, that will be filled with from both the sides. It will be filled with a dollar symbol. So, you can see the output here. Welcome to Python is the string you have provided and it is coming in the middle because you have done center alignment and the left side and the right side, the remaining spaces because total allocated spaces you have given as 40. Remaining spaces is filled with a dollar. Similarly, I want to do left alignment. So, I can use the built-in method L just. So, string 1 dot L just. Total allocated space is 40 and it is I am giving that you remaining spaces you fill it with your your minus symbol or hyphen. Okay. So, can you see the output here? So, it is filling. So, it is left alignment. The, the string is printed from left to right. Welcome to Python first. Then the remaining spaces up to 40 width, whatever the space left out is filled with hyphen. Similarly, R just is a built-in method. So, right justified it will do. So, total allocated width is 40. And the symbol what you are using is hyphen again. So, you can see that the, the string is right justified. Welcome to Python will be right justified. And the before spaces all are filled with your hyphen. Now, if you do not want to use this built-in method, left justification, right justification, center alignment, whatever you want to do, you can do the same thing using your format method also. So, let us see some example how to use format method. Now, for example, I want to print the string test. I want to print the string test. So, which is only four characters. Now, I have given your greater than symbol 10. So, how the output will come? It has, it is called 
write justification you want. So you can see here the, the string test is coming write justified and before that six empty spaces are there. Before that six empty spaces are coming. Now you can see the second one you have not given the colon 10 only you have written that means only width you have mentioned but you have, you have not given less than or greater than symbol that means no left alignment or right alignment. So by default it will do left alignment and the same string it will be printed test four characters followed by remaining six spaces as the blank space. In the third one you can see here I have given the left alignment less than 10 but there is a leading underscore here leading underscore. So I want to print the string test over here. So you can see here the string test will be printed from left justified or left alignment followed by the six underscores will be printed. In the next case you can suppose here hash is a special character you want to mention it is right justified greater than means right justification total allocated width is 10. So you can see the output over here that six hashes in the beginning then the string test is right justified. Now similarly if you want to do center alignment so you can use the cap symbol or XOR symbol. So total allocated width is now 10. So it is the, the string test will be center alignment first and the leading your three spaces before and after test are, M, are containing the M blank spaces. Okay. Next similarly if you are just writing a dot okay colon dot 5 if you are mentioning then you are giving the string arrow plane to print but you are allocating the width as 5. So you can you see here only the 5 characters will come in the output A E R O P. Similar in the next example 10.5 you are mentioning okay that means total allocated width is 10 out of that only 5 characters you want to you, you want to display and 5 will be spaces. So A E R O P followed by space is there for 5 characters. Next is the last one is aeroplane where you have given the right justification you want to do because you have given greater than symbol. So 10 comma 5 means total allocated width is 10 out of that 5 characters only you want to display and the remaining should be filled with your space. So can you see, see over here in the output 5 leading spaces are there followed by AEROP. So this way the formatting can be done in Python. So thank you so much to listen to the class that console input output and formatting in Python. Thank you so much. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.